Yes, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Mind Over Madness podcast with myself and Sean. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, apologies for the hat on my head. I normally wouldn't wear this for this, but my hair is stinking, and I've only just got out of bed. <laughs> so, and it's 4pm in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I just had a bad day, I apologise. Um, but yes, we'll do our normal thing of talking about news, then we'll go games, then we'll go films, and then we'll go random things. Uh, I have asked our friends if there's anything they want us to talk about specifically, and obviously we've done our best to grab a few things over the last two weeks, because obviously yes. we're doing these every fortnight now, instead of... Hopefully it'll be an enjoyable, interesting, a juicy one. Yes, hopefully. It's quite a few things to pick at. It is. Quite, quite a few good things, some big things, some small things. Some good things, small big things, the best things. Big things, <laughs> good things have happened. I'm telling you, it's a, it'll yeah, be gone I'm by Easter. Great results on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a great podcast. Ten out of ten, I would highly recommend. Well, uh, I would say that that's probably a good segue into the into one of my first uh, news articles. Which is probably you know the breaking headline of the U.S. president <laughs> and the first lady testing positive for coronavirus. What a shock. Um, so obviously he's being a kind of a bit of a skeptic not like full on you know saying it's a lie and stuff but he's been a bit of a skeptic of the whole thing and mocking people for wearing masks and saying oh, well I won't be wearing masks at all um, and now it's kind of a lot of people would say it's karma but I don't know That's I don't think anyone would wish anyone the virus but you know it's kind of funny how it works out in the end isn't it? yeah I think well obviously you know as irritating as I find the insufferable human piece of excrement that we call Donald Trump, uh, I certainly hope that he gets a speedy recovery because no one should have to suffer with it at all. But I do think it's poetic justice. Uh, you know, going to these rallies of like hundreds of thousands of people and all of a sudden he's caught it, you know, it's uh, ironic, I think would be yeah. the word more than anything. Um, again, d don't want to see the man, you know, not win the battle against it. And I... I I reckon he'll be... I mean, Christ, he's the Prime Minister. A Prime Minister? President. <laughs> Prime, yes, Mr. Prime Minister. He's, he's a Prime Minister. No, he's the President. So, uh, you know, I'm so. sure he'll, he'll be okay, you know. Uh, it's I'm, like one of those things, it's like not just a health issue, it's like a political one, because he might not be able to stand for the election and stuff, and then they run about, oh, you know, who's going to be President if he can't be, like, for now? Like, it's going to be his Vice President, Mike Pence. Yeah, I'm like, if he really. can't do it, then it's someone else. Yeah, um, Biden. <laughs> Let him take the seat. Early. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> yeah. um, but he's got yeah, he's got a few things stacked against him. He's like seventy four, I believe. Yeah, he's, he's, he's overweight. Quite old. He's old. He's overweight. Not to be uh, insulting to the man, but you know this is no, documented. Like the... <laughs> this is documented evidence that has been uh, talked about on the news and 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 by scientists and by his advisors. And he's and he's a man, which apparently makes it you know worse. <laughs> oh, yeah, because uh, you know man so, flu's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the virus apparently affects men, older men worse than it other women. Um, so yeah, he's got a few things stacked against him, but apparently he's doing fine, and he did get transported to hospital last night. But yeah, he is, which I'll be he honest, stays, he's doing well. I, I, I like the fact that they've put it out that it's just a precautionary thing. It isn't. You wouldn't get taken to hospital unless you needed the help. It was the same crap with Boris. They were like, no. oh, yeah, he's just gone in there as a precautionary thing. Should... Come to find out he went into a ten intensive care on a ventilator for like two, 48 hours. Like, Get oxygen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not just people that seem to believe it when they get told, oh, you know, it's 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 just a precautionary thing. You know, he's, he's the president of the United States. They have to make sure he's okay. No, you wouldn't get put in hospital if you didn't need it. So he yeah. is probably starting to show, he probably had mild symptoms, and then those mild symptoms, he started to struggle to breathe, so they were like, get him on that chopper, get on the jabber, get him yeah. there, he needs to get to the hospital, get him on a ventilator. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently this virus, it, it doesn't start off too bad, you know, like it, a lot of people can't say, only the after effects are like the worst part of it, and you know, after a few days or weeks, it starts getting you know, really bad, but for yeah. people of his age and criteria. Um, very risky but yeah they, there's a reason why they don't tell you oh you know he's on a ventilator or whatever yeah. because they don't want people to get you know, well it, it's 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 that thing of i think it's also the panic thing of like having the population not worry about him but i also think it's a, a, a symbol of power isn't it if if the president of the united states is all of a sudden lying in a bed it's like yeah, how he we can't had, be seen as weak <laughs> yeah north korea we had no idea that kim jong-un was uh was having his operation on his heart again not yeah. until he was randomly seen, you know, no one knew yeah. where he was. He it's, just disappears for three weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a symbol of power. It's like, oh, the, it, it, 
Yeah. It's either they are seen and they are fine, or they are not seen and they're not heard from, but they are fine. Don't worry about it. We're all good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's obviously Joe Biden came on the next day and was like trying to make it probably a little, a little bit politicized and saying, oh, you know, this virus, you know, it doesn't discriminate. It affects everyone. It's a humbling reminder to us all to keep safe, wear masks and stuff. You just know so, that wasn't his first draft, though, do you? I know. Yeah, like, <laughs> he yeah. came out and he went, say, you're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like actually in the debate, which we'll talk about in a second, he oh, literally God, mocked God. his <laughs> wearing a mask and stuff. Oh, and he wears a mask as big as anyone from two hundred feet away. <laughs> I think it's. Um, a st- I do think I do agree with that statement. It is definitely a stark reminder. The virus is still around. It hasn't gone. It's not disappeared. Uh, it is still just as dangerous as it was. But I also find it uh, ironic, and um, hopefully. It's unlikely, but hopefully maybe it'll humble him a bit, having yeah. it, you know. Maybe he'll sort of appreciate the fact that, okay, I have been playing this down quite a lot, but to suffer from it and now the continued effects for months after, you know, may- maybe I should have taken it. views a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully it does. But, you know, it, it is Trump, and, you know, has it changed Boris's views? <laughs> no, so, Boris so. got worse. He got uh, worse yeah. at handling it. Uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> How could Trump get worse at handling it? That's my worry. <laughs> I know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, well. oh, Only a potential month left of his presidency. <laughs> oh, Christ, that's <laughs> nuts. Can you believe four years he's been in power? Yeah. I, I didn't even realise that until it was like... Because <laughs> I heard about the election. I was like, oh, that's weird. It only feels like maybe a year or so ago he was elected. Yeah. And then I was like, shit, it was 2016? Mm. I was like, What? So obviously the uh, next presidential election is in a month, around about a month today or something. Um, they've got uh, Joe Biden, uh, the uh, Democratic candidate, and uh, obviously Trump is trying to do another four years. Mm. Um, had a little debate the other day. Um, mm-hmm. It was a bit of a train wreck, people are calling it. Yeah, and they were the saying that the, the biggest loser is America because of the, that absolute train wreck. I, I, I'll, I'll say this much. Trump did a, uh, a technique in that and i'll give him this i I can't remember the name of it and i learned about it on the philip defranco show on youtube and the technique is basically you throw (laughs) so much information so much misinformation it is impossible for the people there to even attempt to say what's true and false so it basically just becomes a it's all about me 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 you can't overrule me kind of thing Um, because but you know we saw joe biden he was was standing there being like shut up I'm recording, woman. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> she saw the cat and was like, "Oh my god!" Uh, but um, yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, but yeah, we we all saw what Joe Biden was like. He was very. He, he couldn't get a word in edgeways. That's why most of his words were "shut up, man," and "let me speak." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people were kind of concerned that he's going to like fall for the bait and like, start an argument thing. But I think he's kind of tried to show how humble he was to kind of try and have some manners and stuff and how unpresidential Donald was interrupting him like 72 times or something. I think, um, I don't know. I think both of them made a lot of mistakes. I understand Joe Biden getting f- furious, obviously standing there trying to make his points and there's just this... I'm sure he wanted to say silence. a lot more than shit. <laughs> yeah, silence yourself. I'm talking. I'm more important. Yeah. yeah I think the only valid thing... Uh, Biden actually got out uh, from the hi- uh, bear in mind I've only watched the highlights I couldn't be asked to watch an hour and 40 minutes of two grown men arguing um, but after watching the highlights the only the only thing that I really saw Biden get out uh, was you know where's your tax returns <laughs> that, that's yeah. it you know and uh, Trump obviously tried to go for a low blow with like mentioning uh, Biden's son or something mm-hmm. being like, a drug addict or something. and then he was like you think you can manage to win over the American people saying my son did have a drug addiction, but he conquered it, like a lot of you people out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, make him a man of the people. I, I like... think he said to Trump at once, "Oh, you wouldn't know a suburb if you took a wrong turn." Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dokey, stay safe. Sorry, I was heading off to work. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, what do we think of like the actual candidates? Because the Trump is seventy-four, Biden oh. is seventy-seven, I believe. So yeah. I mean. It's quite old. Like by the end of the term, if Biden gets in, he's going to be eighty-one. Oh. Oh. I mean, most people are retired by then. Like, and you know, well I into mean, the care. If, if, <laughs> if, if they want to do that job, you know, run the the world's most powerful country at that age, more power to them. Uh, I think personally, 
Uh, I'm not going to pull a Dwayne Johnson and say who I think people should vote for, mainly because I think this one is so divisive that a lot of toxicity can come from that, even if we don't even get that many <laughs> that many people who watch. It's still like a massive risk. It's like it'll come no. back to bite you in the ass at some point. So, I mean, personally, I, I, I think it's just the lesser of two evils, let's face it. I mean, Biden's not Trump, let's say that, but... He's definitely got his own things that are not exactly, shall we say, friendly towards most of the population. Um, you know, from what I know, anyway. I mean, he's got good stuff as well. I mean, we all can't deny that Trump has done an excellent job with America's economy. It's the only thing he did good with. But he he has increased their GDP over the four years. He has increased a huge amount of income into the American economy. He did boost it up before COVID. And no other president had ever made it reach that high, as far as I'm aware. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't know if Biden would have the charisma that I think that's the problem. You know, Trump's very much used to playing a part, isn't he? He's used to building a persona up. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas Biden comes across as a very normal person, which is good. But when you're running for like a presidential candidate or something, personality kind of matters. You know, people gravitate yeah. towards charisma, which, let's well, face it, Biden doesn't have a lot. He's a nice well, guy, yeah. but... No one's going to have uh, fully agree with everything that either Absolutely, one of them do, because yeah. it's just like in this country, like, Labour and Conservative, <laughs> like, yeah. one appeals to the more working class and, like, poorer people, and then the other, mm. like, appeals to the rich and, you know, tax cuts and all this. <laughs> the rich stay rich. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of a similar thing over there. So it's like 50-50 of the population. Yeah. Yeah. I would absolutely and, say from, from a UK pr perspective, Trump cannot stay on, though. I will say that. Someone else needs to take that seat, I think, for, for the next four years. Yeah, I think it would be good to have give uh, Biden and the <clears throat> Democrats a chance just to you know, yeah. not be a buffoon in, the, in, the, uh, in their government. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not not to say, you know, vote for Biden or vote for Trump, you know, vote for whoever you want to vote for. But I think the best advice... Well, it's nothing is... to do with us, we can't vote. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, you know, we're in the UK. But it, in a strange, weird sort of turn of coincidence... White supremacists aren't going to come and get us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, that's, that's something we'll get on to. Um, but... Yeah, no, in regards to uh, with Brexit happening and stuff, I guess we do kind of have to pay a bit of an attention to it because obviously with Brexit happening and Boris trying to push that deal through and now the EU are threatening threatening the UK with legal action because they're trying they to break taken, the law. Yeah, they yes, have taken started. legal action against Yeah, we've got a month. <laughs> 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 basically, she stood up, took two minutes and just basically went, Boris, quit acting like a dick. Here's my legal response. Your Get your lawyers. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and when you've got a month and walked off, like yeah. it was. I I think that's a realistic. I think a stark wake up call. I definitely think for the UK. But um, the point I was trying to make. I apologize. I always go off on these tangents. Um, is uh, with deals and stuff that we need to make with people. I think it is quite important about who is in power uh, in America, because at the end of the day, that's going to dictate what kind of deals we can get with them, how easily or how difficult it's going to be. You know. Although we can't vote on that side of things, it needs to be beneficial yeah. for both sides of the party, you know. Yeah, a lot of people say the whole world should have a vote on the American president because the American president is the leader of the free world, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, um, that's that's coming under a little bit of uh, scrutiny, I think. <laughs> for, um, you know, free world. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see about that. But... Yeah, because it affects all of us, doesn't it? It is a, a big decision. But it? mostly Americans. <laughs> yeah, I, I would absolutely... I, I will say this much, even though the UK government is a complete shambles, I'd much rather that than what America has right now. No offence to yeah. anyone in America, but because I know I have some people that watch from America, we're not we're not dishing you. <laughs> we just we're grateful we don't have to deal with their shit. Yeah, no, we do have our own problems though. Yeah, ironically, I think Americans would say the same though. They'd be like, "Oh, well, we we would rather deal with this than deal with what you guys are dealing with." That's a yeah. really bad accent. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Don't oh my quote god. me. But yeah, what? Um, um, out of curiosity, what was your take on on Trump's little mention of stand down, boys? You know that kind of. That that entire white supremacist, and the response uh, as well from his uh, speak speaker, who was like, "Well, he said this in 2017. He said this in 2018." You know. Yeah. Well, I think that's just kind of giving the them what they wanted, and like maybe he didn't actually think about what he was saying at that point. Like, 
Mm. I don't think any any president would actually advocate like them to you oh, know yeah, no. wait there while <laughs> cause unrest if I lose. Mm. Um, but I don't know. It's clearly he's trying to like get on everyone's <laughs> tickers. I, think, uh, I don't think he he said it to like obviously to be like I believe in white supremacy. He'd be pretty fucking dumb to do that. Yeah. I'll be honest. And Donald Trump is not that stupid. He but, won't say he isn't. <laughs> yeah, he, he's gonna like uh, he's, disavow uh, it. But. Well, uh, he's a gaslighter, isn't he? He's um, is that what they call it? You know, someone that gaslights someone and winds them up, or yeah. yeah. He's very much a gaslighter. That's how he gets all the press and all the attention is by saying ridiculous, outlandish things, but yeah. says them in such a way. And you cannot give it, it's quite intelligent. He says it in such a way you can't outright say that's what he's saying. Yeah. Because it's slightly off. <laughs> so it's, yeah. there becomes a debate about it and it keeps him relevant. You know, not <laughs> it's like, are you saying relevancy. this? And it's like, I'm not, not saying this. <laughs> I'm not, not, yeah, we, in this country we have go to work, don't go to work, stay at home. Over there they yeah. have, I didn't say this, but I did say this. It was a little bit of this and a bit of that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You know, ironic, really. <laughs> I think you get more persecuted for what you don't say than what you do say these days. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's one of the biggest things now, isn't it? It's uh, innocent, uh, guilty until proven innocent instead of innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, yeah. Which is very wrong. <laughs> um, regardless of who the person is, whether it's Trump, Biden, me, Johnny you, Depp. whoever, Johnny Depp, like, you know, it, it, why has that changed? <laughs> why is that different all of a sudden? But yeah, rough, um, a rough one for... for presidential debate i think uh yeah good luck to them um, <laughs> yeah absolutely i don't know if the next debate will be taking place obviously they're changing the format because like it just didn't go down to that so they're going to be setting out the criteria for the new version of debate whether that's cutting mics off when they end the two minutes or i, I hope they, i hope they cut his mic off <laughs> but that's the thing is they'll still be able to hear each other like <laughs> he yeah, but shut, that, shut up man <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, uh, excuse me, do I get a chance to respond? Excuse, excuse me. me, I am the President of the United States. Turn their microphone on. <laughs> he can still, like, wind up his opponent. You know, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, just talking to him. Mm. Um, but, yeah, if you've got anything else on the US election, we can... Um, I didn't have anything... I don't think I had anything specific on the election. Yeah. There's some uh, more news items, but uh, if you had anything on the election... <laughs> I haven't got anything on the election, unless there was okay. anything that you could think of. Nope, I think we covered that one. <laughs> Cover that one quite well. <laughs> but yeah, feel free to go ahead on to the next item. Ah, well, um, let's have a, a chat, shall we, about the new restrictions that are going to apparently last six months. So this was announced on the 22nd of last month. We're obviously filming this on the 3rd. Um, it comes out on the 4th. Uh, so what's kind of your take? Because um, this happened just after we had done the last podcast, so we didn't get a chance to talk about it two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but how have you? What's your experience been with it? Like, do you think it's stupid? Do you think it's going to work? So the new national restrictions, as I believe it, it's the rule of six, isn't it? Yeah. And curfew at ten p.m. for hot pubs and and restaurants. Um, yeah. And table service. And there's probably <laughs> another one which I can't think of. Uh, that's it's a bit kind of. Uh, pointless because with the the rule of six like uh, that's just there's no scientific evidence like behind having six people together and not spreading the virus because you can have six different households mm -hmm. and spreading that and the fact that there's so many local lockdowns these days with like pretty much two thirds of our country half of your country in local local o over half of Wales are in local lockdown me being in one of the places it's one yeah yeah, I'm in a local lockdown as well. Yeah, you got lynched into Manchester, didn't you? Yeah, because like we literally live like on the border of Manchester and Liverpool. Liverpool's in lockdown. Manchester's in some kind of lockdown. I don't know what's going on. I think the, the rules are more confusing now than they've ever been. Like yeah, at least at the absolutely. start, you knew two meters away, don't meet anyone outside your house you know, okay. unless it's like just one to one. Um, they were they were like kind of more clear at the start. But they're just so confusing now. No matter where you go, it's different everywhere. And there's like even tighter restrictions in Liverpool where they we literally can't go and socialise with anyone outside of our house. Hmm. Um, it is a confusing mess to say the least, and uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's been a bit arse backwards, really, hasn't it? Like they haven't really done a very good job of enforcing anything. They haven't really done a good job of yeah. This is the weird thing for me when it, when they announced these uh, restrictions. What I found odd was how, okay, they put the curfew on, but before even pictures and stuff were coming out, I turned to Vic and I was like, but how are they going to stop people just hanging around in the streets? 
And then, mm-hmm. lo and behold, a couple of days later, there's pictures, videos of thousands of people not wearing masks, not social distancing, hugging, kissing. I'm sure there was a couple fucking behind a dumpster at some point. It's probably happened. <laughs> Sorry, the, casu- the casual sex ban has not worked. So... <laughs> But how do I don't even know what that was about? <laughs> that that was like you can't mix unless you're in a established relationship. We'll get to that. But <laughs> it's I I don't know if the the 10 p.m. curfew thing was actually a good idea. I can't say that it's helped at all. If anything, yeah. I the idea like behind it is just to limit socializing past a certain time when people will be more likely to be intoxicated. So the idea behind it, like okay, you can kind of get behind, but the execution of it. Shutting pubs an hour earlier, really. Yeah. Like people will just start earlier and then kind of be encouraged to kind of go back to each other's houses because they're like, oh, we want to continue on now. Yeah. And they're all getting kicked out at the same time as well. <laughs> like, what the hell? It's that... uh, definitely a, a weird system. Um, and the rule of six as well is complete garbage. Um, the problem is, the weird thing that I found was Matt Hancock, and I think this was on the 23rd, 24th, when they had to actually answer to the House, because obviously they imposed these restrictions and didn't let the House know. Mm. So the Speaker even fucking ripped them apart and was like, it was very uncourteous of you. Um, mm. But Matt Hancock said something along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something along the lines of, uh, we can't do a complete lockdown because obviously the economy can't afford it. It's not fair to do that to you know shield and stuff and we can't let it rip um but we can't do this middle ground dance so what you're saying matt is that we can't do anything and we should just get on with the middle ground shit you're telling us we shouldn't be doing yeah they are doing the middle ground option though because exactly. they're doing these local lo- local lockdowns they might as well just do make all those local restrictions national yeah then it would be like unanimous everyone knows what to do mm-hmm. um and there's no point. Two thirds of the population, half your population, of like so many, are in these local. It's just stupid to call them local anymore. Yeah, you can't really. Call, I, I don't. I don't get it because I, I understand they don't want to put another national lockdown on. Let's face it, that wouldn't help anybody, um, especially people's mental health and stuff. And and having yeah, we that... don't want. Nah, yeah. Sorry, no, go on. We don't want uh, another national lockdown like the first one. It'd probably be like just more national restrictions. Yeah. Uh, rather than full total lockdown, even okay. though they have like acts some industries, night nightlife industries, like what what are they mm. going to do? I mean, to be <laughs> fair, uh, a lot of um, pubs and and chains and stuff have already said that these rules are killing them. They can't do any more. And and the problem is as well is that these rules, these national rules, these um, lockdown uh, curfews or gatherings and things like that, don't make any sense. There was an incident, and this true instant you can look it up there was a uh, a wedding venue of 40 people they were all separated out on six people on each table two meters apart so they they put all the effort in to try and get it as safe as possible following restrictions they got shut down halfway through with a police raid and got fined 10 grand but hmm. here's the catch it's supposed to be 15 people, is it? but here's the catch next door there was 50 people together with the same setup and they were allowed to continue working what, why is that? That makes no sense. Why yeah, shut down a smaller venue but leave a more crowded venue? <laughs> and then you've got fucking this stupid bitch who travelled from Scotland with yeah. COVID all the way down to the house, came into the house with the virus, then mm-hmm. left and went back on the tube. Mm-hmm. Is she, get... right at risk. <laughs> she hasn't even been sacked. They're like, oh, I well, know. I don't want to sack her, you know. And I, I actually really, really like uh, the lady that, that's, you know, in charge of Scotland Nic- and makes all the Nicola. Choices. Yeah, I actually think she's brilliant. I think she has been very, very blunt and honest with Scottish people, and that's scary to do. Scottish people mm. are fucking terrifying. But <laughs> but she's been very honest, and she came forward and was like, look, I don't, wanna, I don't want to dismiss her because, you know, she is a very long time friend, but I do think she needs to step down. She hasn't. Yeah, that's the kind of guts that this government doesn't have in the UK. Yeah, but well, this, in England. the thing that frustrates me is that I think what they should have done is you've got a week to step down, and if you don't, I will fire you and dismiss you. And yeah. and that it would have given her that opportunity to be honest and come forward and be like, I'm sorry for what I did, it was wrong, I'm willing to step down. But she hasn't, and she's had no warning, except for those ones. But it's not like her job is at risk, because she's you know not being 
yeah. uh, prosecuted. And let's not even get onto the Jeremy Corbyn bullshit that he had uh, yeah. nine people round his house for dinner and then it was guaranteed he wasn't going to be fined £200. Why? <laughs> yeah. He broke the rules. Because so, he's in London. I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to arrange a house party for this weekend. I'm going to have all my mates around and if the police turn up, I'm going to tell them they can stick it up their arse because it's not fair. <laughs> Why do I get fined, but Jeremy Corbyn doesn't? And um, there's a better one than that as well. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Stanley Johnson, no mask on in a shop. Yeah. yeah. Did he get a fine? Nope. <laughs> He's <laughs> Boris's dad, so why would he? He was only av- advocating when the pubs were shut to let them open <laughs> in the I, middle I, of I, lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And it's mad like this this system that has been put in place to apparently protect people and look after us and they're fucking breaking it all the time and not yeah, even getting just, punished for it that's t- totally one rule for them one rule for everything exactly and it, it it just doesn't work that way and i do not care what anyone says these rules are bullshit and i understand why they've got the rules and i'm not saying that having no we should have no rules and let the virus spread to everyone and whoever dies dies of it i'm not saying that what i'm saying is if they're going to make rules and they're going to make these lawful rules that they have to be abided by law then no one is exempt it doesn't matter if you're a politician it doesn't matter if you're a famous person it doesn't matter if you you are the speaker of the bloody house no matter who you are if you break the law you suffer the consequence this two-tiered bullshit grade of your poor uh, like you're not important we are and that that divide is why people are getting angry and not following the rules you know, yeah. If they came out and went, Jeremy Corbyn is being fined two hundred pound. That woman has just been sacked, and she's also going to face a uh, prosecution for super spreading. And fuck the venue. We apologise, and we find the other one too. If they did that, I think people wouldn't be breaking that curfew all the time and gathering all the time because they'd yeah. find it fair. It, you just, know, uh, it's a punishment fits the crime, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. And there's, there is actually a person who has been prosecuted of super spreading and is now risking ten years in jail. Yeah, it's just completely unfair, isn't it? It's it just doesn't add up, and I think that's what gets me is that I don't mind, I don't like these rules. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to be able to just go outside and meet friends. I'd love to have like Sean come down here and spend time down with us. It would be lovely, but we have been told that we have to follow these rules. But why don't they? I know um, it's going to get to a stage yeah. where everyone can just like if it carries on like this, and there's no actual strict punishments. They're just going to do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. And probably already are, you know, most people, well, not most people, mm. some people already are. Most people are still kind of sticking to it, but it's only a matter of time before patients are a bit thinner. I mean, you know, uh, it's frustrating because we we have all sacrificed a lot in these last six months, and 2020 has not been a fun year. We we all can admit and, uh, and acknowledge that. But this two tier, if this, if this kind of favoritism just continues, this is gonna get a lot worse and like mm-hmm. uh, i mean we only saw a fraction of an example uh, on another thing that i was going to talk about which was the riots that happened um sadly you know and the seeing the police be surrounded by over a thousand people and they've there's like a tiny group of them with batons kicking the shit out of people to try and def- protect themselves you know mm. And people are going, oh, the police are using violence. Yeah, you have a thousand people surrounding you and you've got a bat on. Try not to hit them. Yeah, you know, people who are like, the police are so brutal. They're being so mean. Fuck off. If I was one of those policemen, I would have been sacked for for assault. I would have kicked the shit out of every Tom, Dick and Harry in my way. Mm. It must have taken so much strength and and, uh, restraint to stand just next to each other, pushing people instead of just getting the bat and twatting someone. Yeah. but that's kind of like people. far left extremists and movements which are mm. trying to just you know, defund yeah. the police and all this kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, they they would rather just live in anarchy. Mm. <laughs> so. I think the thing is as well is like I understand the peaceful protests. That's fine. The, oh, moment, yeah, the, mo- the, mo- the moment you get violent and what they did to those burn police, down buildings. It's it's unacceptable. I actually I I'm surprised that they didn't just go fucking send the SWAT out there and just point a gun at them. And know, if they, if they then... come if they come running at you, pull the trigger. I, I'm sorry that might sound harsh and draconian, but I cannot. Yeah. And like for the first time ever, 
if you had shown me that footage and I didn't know it was the UK, I would have assumed that was America. Mm -hmm. We are now no longer better than them. And that sounds horrible. I'm not trying to say that Americans just riot and kick the crap out of people. That's not what I'm trying to say. But in the UK, it's very rare for something like that to happen. You know, the police to be given authority to use batons on the civilians. Mm -hmm. That I think the last time a riot that bad happened was a good, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Don't quote me on that. I don't actually know. But <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing, you know, it's been a long time since a serious thing like that happened. And that, you know, that's going to happen again. You know, these these groups and stuff have already said, yeah, we're planning another one. Yeah, we're standing by. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, stand by, boys, stand by. Yeah. Stand back, stand by. It's, it, do you know what? It, it, it didn't even make me angry. It just upset me. Because when the vi when we finally got that R rate down and we everything was slowly coming back to some form of normality, to see those kind of riots and, Christ, you saw police women there who are like bless them five foot two <laughs> and just these six foot giant guys pushing them slapping them mm. it's heartbreaking well, you're like see, you can just guarantee that there's someone with a louder voice than ours shouting the exact opposite like oh please they're fucking brute pigs they're brutal oh, I know. and do you know what's ironic racists. do you know what's really ironic if a terrorist came in and started attacking people what would they say help mm. protect me yeah but then when it's something they don't like, get out of my way or I'll kick your teeth in. Oh, it's like, please brutality that. Yeah. It's it's such a fucked system. And I w this is the only reason I wish I had a bigger platform is just to be like, please appreciate the people that help out. Like and whether it's NHS workers, police, firefighters, anyone that has to risk their life going outside into these fucking idiots like mm -hmm. domain like all the police are wearing masks that means shit <laughs> none of them were wearing masks so mm. who gives a fuck you're gonna get it if they got it you know and yeah you wear a mask to protect other people if they're not wearing masks and go give a fuck then yeah you're I mean, screwed so. I, again i i'm not saying that i don't sympathize with the 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 uh reasoning behind getting frustrated with these rules again as we've listed off the incidents of you know mps not getting in trouble for breaking the rules mm -hmm. of course i i sympathize with that but yeah, violence is not going to solve anything. No. You know, and it was horrific, you know. And I, I, I call me old or, you know, a boomer or whatever, but I just don't understand how someone could be like, yes, I'm going to go out and riot today, and when I punch a police person in the face, I'm going to feel good about it. How? <laughs> how do you wake up in the morning and feel good about yourself, mate? <laughs> I, don't know. I just. Uh, I don't know. They're just doing their jobs. Then. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, but we hey, shall move on to something that was a bit rough less. One. Uh... <laughs> Have you got uh, any new stuff that you want to go? Um, there was a like little kind of nice thing I saw in the past week. It was uh, apparently uh, paramedics are starting to like test out uh, kind of check packs kind of things. Mm. But like people were walking and hiking on like moorland or hard to reach places. They're kind of testing out this like alpha build of like a jetpack thing where they can fly oh, up yeah, and you know. Yeah. <laughs> give assistance and they get, they've been having some like good results on it like it could actually be, be the difference between life and death like hmm. if they can get there within minutes rather than an hour with a helicopter and trying to find so much life hmm. uh, but yeah that's a promising <laughs> little futuristic uh, little positive story yeah I, th uh, I think that's pretty cool I, I did see I haven't actually read anything on it but I saw the pictures and stuff and it looks pretty amusing I'm not gonna yeah uh, yeah it actually works like what the hell Say, holy um, crap, it's not just a thing that you just use on the water. It's the future is here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're finally in the future with jetpacks. People can fly now. <laughs> just paramedics. Yeah, just just the paramedics, though. We're not doing any more than the paramedics. <laughs> we'll see them with, like, uh, deep hit blasters soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he's alive. <sighs> he's got it. He's, well, he's okay. It's all right. He's fine. <laughs> Uh, Deep it blasters. Oh, right. <laughs> that, that would be cool. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. But then, if the technology gets into the wrong hands, you know, we could have another Star Wars Empire situation. Whoa, Death Star again! And uh, yeah. <laughs> we're back at square we're one, boys. We're back at square one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's fair. Uh, God <laughs> created the world in seven days. The Death Star destroyed it in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Right. I do 
have we another thing. Games that you lack. Oh, I have more stuff, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. I have more, and it's not all completely negative. But the uh, the COVID app that came out on the twenty fourth of last month. Uh, what do we think about it? Do we think it's going to be helpful, useful? What we've seen so far. It would so be far? great, but my phone is an Android six point oh and above, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't download it. Oh, did you, old, did you but... see that uh, that clip of Matt Hancock when he got asked about that? Um, he was like, loads of people, uh, the, the newsreader was like, loads of people have uh, downloaded it, but what about all these other people that can't download it because their devices are, are outdated? And Matt Hancock literally, right when he went, but loads of people can't download it, went, fantastic, that's wonderful. <laughs> and it was like, you dickhead, you didn't listen to the question. <laughs> There's tons of people out there who oh. can't just spend money on the latest phones and whatever. Yeah, yeah it's, it's ridiculous. I am surprised at that. I mean, I've got it. Don't get me wrong, but it kind of be. It's really not that great. <laughs> it's pretty basic, you know. It's like your area is high risk. I knew yeah. that anyway. <laughs> and you're not supposed to be like going out anyway, so it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> recording people who you pass in the street. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's it's a strange one. I think it's good, but only if everyone has it. And unfortunately, not everyone can have it because some people have outdated devices. And my phone is, I wouldn't call it three years like no. old, outdated. No, three years so, is not outdated. So, yeah. Weird. It's just a bit ridiculous. And an app isn't going to make much difference, to be honest. Like, no. There's already been loads of complaints about it. People getting alert messages when they shouldn't have um, yeah. errors in the, in the system, software, and whatever. I think and people are, oh, it's going to get ironed out. You know, it's working as intended. Yeah, it's and you've got Matt Hancock who's like loads of people can't install uh, can't install it. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it is just a fucking hilarious clip. Thank God Bioware didn't make the app because it would be a, <laughs> it would be a completely. Do what? Bioware would have done a fucking better job. <laughs> I'll say that. I'll say it. <laughs> Anthem was better than that app. That's, that's how yeah. far I'm willing to go with it. it had less bugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god <laughs> but yeah i think it could be useful but it's just it's not working as intended right now is it no and it's, it's a shame because like i would love to use that thing where if you go to the restaurant you can just scan your phone beep, and it gives you all the details but you know i can't do that so, I, I just, well, i'm not going out eating anyway <laughs> I know, yeah. like i'm not going out eating anyway <laughs> yeah it's uh, a weird one to say the least <laughs> Yes, what else have you got, good sir? Uh, I did have something up on my phone. Here we go. So, a bit of, bit of more positive news. So, I'll, I'll read the article oh. and I'll try and save the article and link it. Make me there. happy. So, happy new year. I know we're not there yet. Give me a second. Coronavirus vaccine could see mass UK rollout in just three months with every Brit adult given jab by Easter. Mm. So essentially, uh, just from scanning through of it, uh, they are there is uh, basically scientists that are working in Oxford. Um, obviously, we know that the UK has been putting a lot of time and effort into trying to find one. That is something they have got right, um, and they have actually found something that does combat the virus. Um, they have done testing on it and stuff, but they are still proceeding with more tests and human trials mm. and that kind of thing. But apparently, it's looking very, very positive. Um, yeah. So they're hoping to have it by the end of the year um, to go out to sort of like uh, the most vulnerable, yeah, most vulnerable and kind of um, key workers and stuff like that. Um, and then after that, hopefully, it'll be a mass rollout in January, February time for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully by Easter next year, we can I get back imagine to a world where we don't have to social distance. This oh, I know it's weird, isn't it? The idea. Uh -huh. But imagine this. Think about it, though. Like, this this pandemic has stopped people from living their lives for nearly, well, by the time this rolls out, a year. And that's yeah. if everything goes to plan. If something goes wrong with this vaccine, they're like, fuck, we've got to push it back to the end yeah. of the year. I'm going to be so uncomfortable in a large crowd, though. Like, so <laughs> oh, I ain't going near that. people. Yeah. <laughs> like, James, give me a hug. Stay back or I spray you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, it's going to be a weird kind of shift of psychological things after that. But uh, yeah, they are they are having to uh, to draw up new uh, laws and rules to allow staff to get the jabs earlier and and, and things like that. Um, apparently, drive-through vaccine centres are also being uh, planned to cope with the uh, vast logic logistical problems of uh, administering vaccines and 
to tens of millions of people. So the idea is that they want to bolster these uh, little <laughs> test centers that they've got, even though they've done a great job of that so far, uh, mm. and want to have them become vaccine, vaccine. distributors. Um, I don't know how that's going to work, but if it works, hey, it works. But you know, it'd be funny. Well, it wouldn't be funny. But imagine if it like rolled out and then millions of people get vaccinated. It turns out <laughs> there's another outbreak. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the biggest quote that they actually had. Uh, and I'll make this the last part, is that uh, apparently a government source told the paper that they were looking closely, uh, closer to six months, and it's likely, at this point in time, to be a lot sooner than six months. So that's why they're hoping next three months they can start rolling it out. Uh, so that's possibly, good. possibly, I mean, let's not get our hopes up, but possibly by December, just before Christmas, so maybe you can have that Black Friday riot that you've always been looking forward to since January, mm -hmm. uh, you might be able to actually go out and shop without the risk of, of catching COVID, which would be mm -hmm. nice. But, uh, yeah. That's a very optimistic. <laughs> it's very, very optimistic, but uh, an opti optimistic side I am willing to fucking accept by this point. I, I want to be go. able to go out and not have to worry about being sneezed on. <laughs> yeah. You know, or talking to someone and then I catch the virus because they've said a word that has more spittle in it. <laughs> yeah, singing and dancing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obviously, that's been bad now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't sing and dance. It's like, yeah. it's like singing it's... is an acceleration of the virus. It's authoritarian. <laughs> um, <sighs> yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I say we did a pretty good roundup on that. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna have good. a quick talk about the uh, the royal family and how that's all gone down the shitter, but we'll leave that oh, for a bit okay. longer. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that. That that is a that is a story we could again go on about for hours and hours. So, I think uh, we'll leave that for now. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, gaming? Shall we move on to gaming. Yes. Let's move on to gaming. Okay. So. Uh... Obviously, we're all uh, geared up, looking forward to the PS5, which launches next month. Um, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about uh, Spider-Man uh, oh. catastrophe, let's just say. <laughs> so, obviously, if you own Spider-Man on the PS4, you ain't getting a free upgrade of it on the PS5. There is a PS5 version of Spider-Man, though, and you have to buy the Miles Morales Ultimate Edition to get that one. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of annoying of quite a few people and um the That's fact that saves don't transfer because it's currently there's a new game um oh. from the ps4 so people are a bit annoyed about that but i mean i wouldn't mind that too much if because if i'm going to play on ps5 i'd want to play it from the beginning anyway yeah yeah um, that, i'd be fine with that also they've made a few uh, adjustments to peter parker's face uh, <laughs> is... the the defamed photo you sent me <laughs> yeah oh, God, you should have watched the video it's like he seems like so emotionless in uh, his oh, yeah. new face. It's like he's just um, kind of gone to Beverly Hills and had plastic surgery to make him. <laughs> he's, he's gone to Beverly Hills, man. He doesn't look the same anymore. <laughs> but a lot of people will have emotionally connected with Peter in PS4 Spider Man because that's the, the Peter we've associated with that universe now. Yeah. And for them to just kind of just change the main face of it, uh, I, I, I don't know how I, mean... I feel about it. I think it's a bit strange because obviously it's gonna, it's not gonna sound like Tom Holland. No, that's um, the same voice, Gary guy <laughs> who does the voice. I him, think, but, I um... think to be honest, it was pointless. I think they should have just done that in the beginning. If they were gonna do that, they should have done it straight away, not done it yeah. after the fact, and just been like, "Hey, Tom, can we use your likeness? Here's a fat wad of cash, uh, mm. you know, so we can use your likeness." But. Um, I, th I think it's a mistake. I think, quite frankly, hopefully, maybe they'll bring out an option to be like, he can change it to this face or this face. No, that would be too just. Uh, that would inqu that would inquire having a button yeah. <laughs> or an option to change it. You know, game it's companies like don't like, like that. Reworked his face completely, so it won't even work for the old face now. It's yeah. it's kind of weird, uh, but I liked PS4 Spider-Man's face. You know, it, I thought it showed more emotion. It was kind of more. A little bit more aged, a few wrinkles in there, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, it was supposed to be like an older Spider-Man, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean. Now he's back to being like schoolboy. <laughs> I, I didn't. I don't think it was bad. I don't think it's a bad idea. I haven't obviously watched the footage. I actually have a video up of it by here, um, just so I can see it in the background while I talk. But uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't even really look like Tom Holland, does it? 
you know, it just doesn't seem as emotion filled. <laughs> it's like they've taken the facial structure of Tom Holland, but left the face of the original character. So it doesn't really fit. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I mean, I, apparently it's for the PS5 upgrade. Um, yeah. Wherever. Oh, yeah. If you, if you play it on PS4, the PS4 version on PS5, you'll still have the old face. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not paying an extra, what is it, 20 or 30 quid for an ultimate edition of a game that I have no interest in paying that amount of money for. There's a reason yeah. I refunded my Cold War <laughs> the game. Yeah. They did actually show some zombies gameplay. So I, mean, that's like, I did say it, was, it does look quite cool, but nah, I'm going to wait for yeah. a sale. <laughs> I'm, I'm not making the same mistake here. No, I will not. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I think I'm from now on. I'm just going to get games on sale now because the release prices are just getting ridiculous. Yeah, seventy quid is too high, and and, and it's. I've already enough. pushed about out getting this count console now. <laughs> Never mind getting the fucking yeah. super expensive games as well. I think the thing is as well something that I I didn't think about until uh, recently when I was looking for upgrades for my PC and things like that for next year or whatever. Um, that uh let's face it we've pre-ordered the console which is wonderful but they always end up bringing out another version of that same console like three months later with slightly upgraded things or components in it because something's gone wrong on the original one and i'm like yeah. that's gonna happen isn't it <laughs> like, the first consoles we get are gonna last like a year and then they're gonna start sounding like jet engines again <laughs> Yeah, they'll make sure that they tweak them so they last a year, like just as they're out of warranty. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh Christ. No, I'm sure that I'm sure it'll be all right. You know, a uh, lot of people have had launch PS4s from launch, and they're working yeah. perfectly. A lot of people had launch PS3s for the whole generation; they work mm. fine. Actually, I was gonna. I'll ask you this: What do you think about like big influencers um, and celebrities getting these consoles already? Like they've already got consoles. Yeah, some of them have. Uh, it's, it, I suppose it's like it's just, they're trying to appeal to that to people who watch them. Mm. Um, I know one of the people that I watch, Alana Pierce, on YouTube. She's got an Xbox, Xbox, the new one, Series X, yeah. and she was like, "Ask me anything." And the thing is tiny. It mm. is literally like this yeah. big. It is. Really I think I've small. seen thumbnail or something with that. Yeah, it's um, absolutely fucking tinsy. Like what? How? It's all part of the marketing these days. Like. They pay people to stream their games these times, and it is so yeah. very cringeworthy when they. I mean, I think there was like a Jack Septic I did one about the uh, Stadia, and it's yeah. so like corporate and like, oh my god, oh. this is so cool. No, like, it's above just hell. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't think that I could ever do something like that. I think if it was to so ever, they actually sell themselves. It's sponsored yeah. by Google, so you know it's going to be a biased opinion. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. You know, if if anyone does want to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah like that's ever gonna happen i think we've slacked uh, up every single company <laughs> yeah but i'm i'm one of those people i'm very honest and i i don't sort of take my like pull my punches and i think that would scare off people anyway so it's yeah they wouldn't pay you for doing a negative thing <laughs> like i think that. the thing is it i'm very much a person of like uh and this is why if i if someone's doing like a review of a game or something and they go uh this this copy of the game was given to me by the developers but anyway let's get into the review yeah that's it. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, this is so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I, I, if, if, the yeah, if I hear someone say I was given it to for free and I don't like routinely watch them and and sort of get an understanding for how they do their videos and things, I immediately click off it. You you are automatically going to be biased because you've gotten it for free. So any kind of broken thing in there, you're gonna go, oh, it's fine. I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I don't know. It seems a bit. I get it because people want like reviews or they want information on the new consoles and things like that. But I think people should pay for it. Pay yeah. the money. If you want a review, maybe even companies could make more money out of it by charging slightly more for a review one. So you, or you want it this time earlier, pay an extra however amount. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's one way of doing it. I suppose their logic is that if they give them to these for free, then they got to make more money for the people watching wanting to buy it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's I, it's not something I personally think is that big of a deal, but no, no, it is slightly. Uh, you know, you have a more of a bias, I would assume, if you've been given something for free. Oh yeah, so, you're trying to sell it for them. Yeah, essentially, you become part of the marketing. <laughs> yeah, sell yourself. <laughs> um, so obviously, uh, Division Two had a little update recently. <laughs> Thought we'd always go back, loop back to Division Two like we always do. Yeah. Uh, what are our thoughts on the new uh, Summit Pass? <laughs> Shambles. 
it's it's a bit it's, of a <clears throat> it's not great. Nah. Um, I mean, if they're not wrong. It's replayable, just like the rest of the game. Boring, <laughs> mm -hmm. and apparently now broken as well. Uh, this they've broke it more. How oh, did you wow. how do you do this massive? <laughs> I mean, oh, they just had one simple job, just yeah. replicate the underground <laughs> in the first, first, game, first game. Oh, and they couldn't even do that. Not surprising. No, they but, somehow um, made it the least fun, uh, you know, the most robotic experience. Yeah. It's like, literally uh, a chore to get through. Then. And and my, myself and Sean have both played it together. We got through, I think, 20 floors. I yeah, did go for the first floor. I did go <laughs> back. I did do three more floors. Um, and I, I immediately just left. I, it's not fun. On your, yeah, it's I, supposed to be like a team experience, isn't it? I, I, I don't give a shit about the free exotic. Like, apparently that's a nightmare to get hold Joe of. Joe Exotic. Like, even if it's, I'm Joe Exotic. <laughs> I'm going to get you, Carol. Uh, you know, <laughs> just let me... I'm going to get you, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take out the hat. <laughs> oh, yeah, the hat, the hat kind of ruins it. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I would much rather do missions and stuff, like, at least they're slightly different. It's not just the yeah. same fucking floor layer. But yeah, when it comes to the exotic, apparently when you get to the top, you have to get exotic components of each specific difficulty. Then you get the actual crate at the end. Then you have to do a bunch of fucking <laughs> grindy kill this amount of enemies of each faction, like three named enemies or something weird like that. And then you do another part which gets you the actual weapon. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Oh, so four hunters, that's it. Quest. you got to kill four hunters, which the hunters are at the end of the thing anyway. They're on floor 100. But you can't just start on that floor. You have to start on floor 91, so you have to work all the way up to floor 100. And if you die on 99, you got to start all over again. Oh, my God, it's fucking awful. Yeah, this is totally going to be the last year disappointing. This, this I, year. I don't even think it's going to be a year. I, I don't even think they're going to finish the seasons. Because isn't there mm. meant to be more after season four? Because it's season one, two, three, and four. And then... That's all they've got for now. It's in there because what? How many people were there when they revealed that they were going to do these seasons? It was like four underbosses, and then the final one, wasn't it? Like five. No, uh, I don't know. That's like the uh, format for every single season so far. The last one being like fail hours, and it's no surprise. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's all we've got planned so so far. And they're like, we're pleased to announce that this game will be backwards compatible on next gen. Like, yeah. Who, who proudly announces that? Not that there's going to be a next-gen version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, cool. I'm glad that it, they're not just going, hey, you've got to rebuy the game to be able to play it. I mean, that, that wouldn't work anyway, and I think they're very aware of that. But um, I, I'm really not that... I don't even think it will see the light of day on my PS5, honestly. No, no. I, I don't it's even a bit think... of a waste of space, <laughs> especially with the, the tiny hard drive. <laughs> yeah, the fucking <laughs> minuscule hard drive, which has nothing on it. Yeah. But it's specifically designed to load everything super fast. So. I mean, I'm cool with that. Less yeah. space for, for a quicker thing. I, I'm absolutely fine with that. Less space for garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I think another thing as well that I found disappointing with uh, Division 2 was like when they when they first announced these seasons and we did Season 1, I actually had a lot of fun doing Season 1, although it was grindy, repetitive, and kind of annoying. But the, the, the biggest issue that I have is that they're all the bloody same... <laughs> It's like one event that's slightly different. You get an apparel event, which I don't care about apparel anymore. Yeah, it's, that's all, content these days. it's all crap. <laughs> yeah, I've had one outfit since almost the start. <laughs> Pretty much it. <clears throat> yeah. Because we had... Yeah, so we had the prologue, which was the invasion battle for DC. We've had episode 1, 2, and 3, which was the Pentagon, Coney Island, and DC outskirts. They brought the raid out then, which was obviously late. Uh, and still broken, and there's still people, by the way, that are at the top of that, like the you know world's first for finishing it. They cheated, and they <laughs> cheated. Yep, and they, uh, I don't think they give a shit, so they're just staying there. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I'm a little disappointed because I, I yeah. do love the game, but it's very much a, um, a shame that they couldn't replicate that experience of. of of just enjoyment and fun through the entire thing. No, they fucked it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there'll be a Division 3, but that, if that doesn't work, then that will be the final nail. I actually don't even the think they're going to get to that. I think they're going to wait for the Avatar game. Yeah. And I reckon if that fails, they're just going to go, do you know what, we don't want you anymore. So I know Ubisoft like their franchises with Watch Dogs and all sorts, and Assassin's Creed, so maybe they will be another one. And it probably did sell well at the time. Yeah. But it's just they can't kind of retain their play base. They need to like think of a different 
format because they haven't tried that kind of destiny like mmo experience there yeah. in the other games um, it's a, a weird one because it's a it, it, it's a good foundation but it's just everything that's been thrown at it is crap yeah sadly they tried they tried the big expansion route in like i.e the taken king of destiny like they've done their warlords of new york but that probably didn't go as well as they hoped mm. I mean, um, I like the story. I've said, I'll say it until I die. The story for the Division 1 and Division yeah. 2 were brilliant. It's just the games themselves. I mean, Division 1 finally, I guess, in the end became something better. Maybe they'll do that when all these seasons are over. They'll go, fine, let's just make the game how they want it, and then we can leave it in the, um, in the dust. And then everyone will be like, great, the game's fantastic again, but now there's no new content. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that's what they're going to do. They're just trying to avoid giving the community what they want, until, until they finished, <laughs> yeah. Until they finished what they want to do, and then when they're no longer ever going to be working on the game anyway, they'll just go fine. Just make the loot so they get god rolls every time. D yeah. Throw throw a naked turtle in there. I don't know. Just give them something for the backpack trophy. Um, yeah, complete bollocks. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, shall we move swiftly on? You want to move uh, off of the games already? My God. No, 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 not games. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, on to the next one. <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, my bad. <laughs> we just still have a thing. <laughs> um, so I don't know if we talked about this the other week, but Microsoft acquiring oh. Bethesda. No, I think it happened. I don't... Did it happen after? I think it happened like the day after uh, we finished. Yeah, it. a lot happened, okay, on the day after we did. I'm sorry we're <laughs> not doing this every week anymore, but we're tired and old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, uh, absolutely. What, what's your kind of thoughts um, on it? <clears throat> so obviously they've kind of made this play like a game of chess. Like, <laughs> this is our move, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Obviously kind of they're, they're honouring the PS5 exclusive uh, Death Leap, I think it's called. Mm. Um, but after that, they're like, mm, games after that will probably be on, be on Microsoft consoles only. Or, mm. or it's on a case-by-case -case basis. So we're not going to get any more like Fallout or, you know, Stuff like that. Still I mean, I'm not. The, <laughs> yeah, if you're just a PS4 exclusive or not, PlayStation exclusive player, then mm. uh, you're not going to see lots of those games anymore. <clears throat> which is yeah. a shame because we've got they're kind of the best RPG makers around, really. Well, you've got Obsidian. Uh, they're really good. I mean, Outer Worlds yeah. was really, really good, and Fallout New Vegas was excellent, and that was done by them. <clears throat> yeah, but they just don't do them on a as frequent basis, I guess. Hmm. Um, so there's a lot of big, big names up there that kind of just like being taken away from PlayStation. Always. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you got ID, who do Doom. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. uh, who else was that? Because it was a big umbrella, and and again, I I think we did talk about this last week, but just to reiterate the fact that Microsoft, you know, have about seventy billion. Was it seventy billion? How much did they buy for? Million? It was a million, wasn't it? Yeah, million. Sorry, they have seventy million. Yeah. Uh, cash on hand, and that's not including what they got in stock. And they paid seven point five million for for the entirety of Bethesda, ID, and every other company under that that umbrella. And they yeah. that was like a fart in the wind for them. <laughs> oh yeah. But apparently, and and rumors have spread that this is not the only buying situation they're going to do. Yeah. So the idea. Who are they of, going to buy next? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The idea of who who are they going to buy out next? Because I mean, they can afford to. They're only yeah. going to make more money from it. And let's face it, Sony can't do it. Sony wouldn't have even been able to purchase that. They have five yeah. million on, on hand. That's it. Like, they are puny compared to Microsoft. Microsoft are enormous, hence why they're such a shit company. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's but successful. Uh, but Sony do make the um, mm. arguably better exclusives. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, they do tend to put more care, I think, into their exclusives. Uh, I think Microsoft is like, um, oh, all right, we'll give it. We'll just buy this company to make our exclusives. Exactly. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, I mean, that is a very clever move if they did it, because if yeah. they're like, well, our exclusives aren't beating theirs, fuck it, buy Bethesda. <laughs> Let's face it, Todd Howard's not doing great anyway. He always lies, so we'll take over, and he can't lie anymore. We have yeah. control of everything that Bethesda puts out, and we won't put it out until we're happy. Boom. That's that's. Billions, <laughs> probably, yeah. in revenue. Just like that. So it's... You can only imagine. They might have spent 7.5 million. They're going to make that back tenfold. Mm. So... Um, I'm a little concerned, though, because I, I would rather... If they do make more, like, Fallout games or Doom games or... 
Skyrim, well, Elder Scrolls, obviously, you know, the Elder Scrolls series and things like that. I would rather them not just be on one platform. Yeah, because you feel like they'd still make money by selling them on Playstations as well. They'd make more, because Sony would have uh, to pay for the, the, the licensing to have And they don't games. seem to be as bothered about their console as Sony is about <laughs> yeah. theirs. Like, they're more about the Game Pass and stuff, aren't they? I mean, it's, it's a smart move, because now EA have put all of their games onto the Game Pass. So EA Play is now completely void on, on the Microsoft's you know, consoles and stuff. Yeah, um, that's they, a smart move by them as well. And now they've got Bethesda. They could put all of Bethesda's games on there. So that's all the Fallouts, except for 1 and 2. Uh, all the Doom games, all the Elder Scrolls games, all suddenly now on... Yeah, all Yeah, all Wolfenstein. All backwards compatible as well, because Microsoft are good at that. That is a mm-hmm. huge fucking library of games for £12 a month. <laughs> and that's just them. That's not everything else they've got in there as well. Like, yeah, it's pretty impressive uh, and a very smart play on their move um it's definitely made me more because i i have owned the game pass in the past because i don't buy games from my, my my xbox i don't see the point i'm i'm always playing games on ps4 with like yourself and uh you know, <laughs> other friends and things Woo! Um, <laughs> so when i when i go to the xbox and i play games on that it's more like i'll just play them off of the game pass it's easier so i'll buy it for like a month and have a month on there I'm never short on games, and they always have new releases and exclusives coming out on there for no extra charge. It's like, Christ. Yeah. It's clever. That is good. It's unfortunate Sony can't really afford to do that with PS Now. (laughs) I think that's why it's not as good. (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of their answer to it a little bit, but it's just not as good. Yeah. They need to kind of incorporate that into one subscription. Uh, Just... Give it to us for free. <laughs> no. I mean, they can't. They well, they can't even. They had to buy the cloud marketing to be able to make PS now off of Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, if you really, if, if Microsoft are probably dangling that over Sony's head, like, do you want to keep that? Yeah. <laughs> you know. I think overall, so, if someone's like, most people are already kind of bought into their like their consoles anyway, so the yeah. PlayStation have a good way of kind of keeping costed customers loyal with their. They've definitely got game. better consoles as well. Yeah. More powerful yeah. and more effective. So I don't know if that will fully <clears throat> sway people. It might sway a few people to kind of go over to the other side, but I don't know. Mm. And you can always play on PC anyway, for people who've got the, the right gaming setups on the PCs. Exactly. So. so they'll want you to buy the, the uh, Game Pass anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You can play it on PC. It is uh, an interesting one. Um, so what games have we been playing recently, anyway? I know I've just recently got into Bloodborne. Yes. And playing that with it. a few friends. <laughs> it's not one that I've slept on for a while. Mm. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people say you've got to play it for such a, a while before it clicks in your mind. And yeah. I think it's, it's getting there, it's getting there. It is, <laughs> it's very much... Uh... I'm punishing myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very much... A... <laughs> Luckily being able to have finished that game in the past, uh, with a lot of help from multiple people, um, uh, it is a rough one, but it is a fun one. I find that you do lose a lot of hours and time. I mean, Christ, we were up until what midnight playing it before. I know we completely lost track of time. Yeah, we were playing it for like three hours, <laughs> and it, yeah. and you're not even making that much progress. But like the bits you do make are like so rewarding to oh do. God, every bit, every time you level up, it's that feeling of just joy. <laughs> Yes, I'm not gonna lose all my progress. Finally, when I slap them, they'll die quicker. <laughs> oh, yeah, you find a new campfire. Oh, pure joy. Oh god, that that there is no feeling like when you defeat a boss in Bloodborne. Like yeah. <laughs> that 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 weird like explosion of the boss, and then you're like, oh, a bonfire. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's so, a good yeah. game. I've been enjoying that. It is a good game. Very very good game. I finished and, uh, Batman Telltale, the first oh. series. Finished oh, that yeah. on stream. That was really good. It's the first time I've ever played through it also. Excellent. I kind of feel bad. Like, the last choice I made was questionable. <laughs> I didn't... Is that where you fight Lady Arkham? Or yeah, yeah, the ending when you fight Lady Arkham. I, I didn't reveal my face. I let Alfred lose his sight in one eye. I felt really horrible after that. <laughs> I was like, I should have just shown my face. I failed you. I was like, I'm sorry, Alfred. I love you. I failed you, Alfred. <laughs> so I was like, should I replay it? just ready for the next series that i'm gonna to start tomorrow but i was like nah it's fine yeah. <laughs> it is what it is <clears throat> he doesn't hate me so 
<laughs> yeah, I thought that was quite an interesting direction from Telltale to take with the Batman ones. And mm. it's, it's quite cool. You can do a little bit of customization. You can choose your little colors and stuff yeah. at the start. Like, oh, that's a little gimmick. And the investigating um, and, and the kind of uh, setting up the fights and stuff. That was really cool. Yeah, trying <laughs> to like big budget <laughs> their kind of I think game. I think Batman that that was probably their last series that really got some good I guess good notoriety. I think yeah. Guardians didn't really get very very good appeal at oh, all. Yeah. I played through like two episodes of that and I think I didn't like it. Um, I am going to try and play through it again, but Walking Dead was yeah. always good. With a new lease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it took me a while. I played through like Game of Thrones and Walking Dead and stuff, and it took me a few episodes to actually <laughs> get into them. Get, Game of Thrones was a rough one. <laughs> I, know. I, 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 I don't know how I managed to get to the end. Yeah, I played through that, and I was just like, I don't even think this even remotely is close to how good the series was, apparently. Yeah. So, <clears throat> But then you've got... Oh, um, like, the only thing motivating me to get through that one was the free trophies and the plans. Yeah, so literally, we... literally. Um, <laughs> the Minecraft ones. Now, I have played a couple of the episodes of the first season of Minecraft one, and I actually yeah. enjoy it. But It's good. You can tell it's like aimed more at kids, but it's, yeah. it's good. I, I like it so far um I'm a, I'm a big child at heart what can i say <laughs> <laughs> we big goofball we big goofball <laughs> what you like what you like <laughs> <laughs> well uh, what have you been playing more uh, is there having anything else on games uh i well playing back going back through fallout 3 again doing that that's cool it's always a fun one um I've nearly finished Origins, at least the story of it, like the main story. I've still got a butt ton of stuff to do in that game, though, and I've pumped like Can 50... you see yourself doing it all? <laughs> yeah. I'm nearly done with the entire map. I've put 50... 51 hours and, like, 26 minutes or something ridiculous like that into it. Um, mm. It's taken me a while. <laughs> yeah. And it took a while for it to click as well. I don't, I, like, I don't know if you got this, but, like, for the first 10 hours, I couldn't really get into it. It was like this weird thing of just, it was so different that I just, I couldn't do it. And then after that, I had like a clicking point after I did like the first two assassinations where I was like, actually, I kind of like this. This works. <laughs> I, yeah, can, no. I can play this. So I think I just kind of focused on the story aspect of that because I actually rented that game. So, and I had like a limited mm. time to play it. So I just <laughs> blasted it through it. Yeah. <laughs> I think if I did all the side missions, I probably would have burnt myself out on it. Because mm. they all are pretty samey. After a while. Yeah, they, they are very similar. Especially when you're going to each location, like, find this place. Now look for the treasure here. You found it. Points. Find all the collectibles. Now. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. think I'm going to do all of the collectibles and trophies and things like that. but Because um, I've still I've got the DLCs to it as well, so I need to play them. And apparently they, they are actually quite long. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, Jesus. But I'm looking forward to it. I am having fun with it. I can't, I can't grumble. And then... Another one I've been playing is Space Colony, um, a game from my childhood. It's like a space builder. It's a lot of fun. Quite annoying at times because the AI is dumb as fuck. But, uh, I mean, for an old game that came back out in the 90s, it's very, very fun. Very good. Yeah. Still love it. So, Oh, my God, I got spots in me tattoo. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Shit. Check it afterwards. <laughs> um, but other than that, not really anything else. So, yeah, I think it's time to move on to the film and TV series, actually. Ooh. Uh, what uh, have which, you been watching? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, the big one that's happened today is Bond has been delayed again. I know. I'm so pissed off. I'm fed up of this shit. I'm fuming. I'm fuming. <laughs> I'm fucking fuming. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> it's clearly a completely, like, corporate decision yeah because you know people are too scared to go to the cinema we won't make enough money this time so we'll have yeah, to make it next april when it's all completely safe i i think they're taking the piss with it a bit um yeah I get, the I mean, film is already done i get obviously. i i get like them wanting to be like there's no point in us releasing it if we're not going to make any money on it like okay fair enough i understand you have to make a certain amount back because you have spent a certain amount Fair enough. That's the one thing, one film I was looking forward to going and seeing. It's like my first, you know, out yeah. into the cinema. And Fast and Furious Nine got I'm put sure back again. The same for the, uh, a lot of people. The two films that I want to see, Fast Nine and the new Bond film, both pushed back until next year, and I'm like, oh Christ, <laughs> they're already a year delayed, you bastards! Just fucking yeah. release them. <laughs> if they just release them as intended, I think it's hurting the cinema industry and you know film industry well, for them to keep delaying it because it's like. All they care about is money, and they—they're never going to make a lot of money. Well, I mean, but... no, no one's going to the cinema. Like, 
actually i think that is one of the sections of the economy that is in trouble is is, is cinemas and stuff right now because people are just not going <laughs> you know yeah. and even if they do go they're not making enough money but you've got to think about it this way with say something like bond comes out then just make that the majority of like the cinema's viewings in like multiple cinemas across the country how the fuck are you not going to make enough money uh, i don't believe that no not for a single second and Question. then they've got like a choice to release it on demand but you yeah. don't want to risk that because piracy and all this well piracy and then you've got like um what was it like they they'd ha they obviously they're gonna hike the price up for it so it would be ridiculous yeah. amount to buy it or rent it or whatever like renting would probably cost 30 quid <laughs> something yeah. ridiculous so, so what was i know they released like invisible man's some of the films like straight to uh everyone's yeah like streaming services and it costs like 20 quid to just watch it yeah i think when i got i think the only one i bought which was released on demand was bloodshot which was the vin diesel uh yeah. film um i think i paid something like that feels like ages ago yeah that was like back in march i actually think that was right at the start yeah <laughs> jesus when the films were still coming in thick and fast oh, <laughs> christ that, that was a different world <laughs> Yeah. Man. we're all so over it now <laughs> yeah <laughs> fucking <laughs> new way of life <laughs> uh, but anyway but yeah it's a it's a shame absolutely because i i really really want to see that film <clears throat> but it's... um uh yeah, yeah well just what can you do it's, the studios want more money so yeah that well what do you kind of think of them pushing it back do you think it's reasonable do you think they're just being greedy at this point yeah, i think it is greed because a lot of people were looking forward to this it's like light at the end of the tunnel the, the, the year has been shit they want to go to the cinema again like this would yeah. they're only showing like repeats at the cinema so they're not people have not got any reason to go yeah but That's something like this would be kind of a turning point for people going back like i know it would be for myself for a lot of other people who've been looking forward to it yeah and even my mum was like oh, i want to watch this so um <laughs> Yeah, I think it would have been wise to release it, but probably, yeah. you know, they might make an extra 20% if they release it next year when yeah. most people are not scared. Oh, and we don't have to socially distance if a vaccine comes out. And so they can it... fit more people in the cinema then, can't Yeah, they? more money. They just keep it in the make... cinema longer. I think the biggest thing is that the premiere weekend, that's when they yeah. make the biggest killing with packed cinemas. Especially in some places like China and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, China. UK. They make a lot of money over their films yeah. like that's where most of the international budget comes from is uk us sorry and uh china yeah opening weekend is everything these days yeah um, it's annoying as fuck but uh, i guess i understand it uh, they're never gonna ever turn back on it although they? they're gonna be like we want all the money it's done it's there waiting for us yeah so it's done it's ready to go music video for no time to die it's like oh with more clip from the film uh, so yeah fuck yes it's like it's actually coming oh no <laughs> it's Stay done under. it's done it's ready it's ready to go just stir pot yeah. add water <laughs> uh, i don't know um <clears throat> any other things well, yeah. that you've been watching I've been, uh, well obviously it's uh, spooktober now mm. i've been watching a little uh, horror series on netflix called okay. slasher oh. it's not very good first season anyway it's kind of like turn you brain up and like watch it it's not quite the same effect as any good horror film it's just you know <laughs> something to watch yeah um so I'm just, i'll try with it I, I think i'm gonna give more faith in like the next seasons it's like a canadian production so give it a little chance it's got three seasons in the first one i'll give it a little chance give it a little chance give it a little i do chance. like slashes so uh i'll continue watching it i'll give it a little chance i had a burp then sorry um <laughs> uh, anything else <clears throat> No. <laughs> <laughs> Over two weeks, you have watched fuck all. Uh, no. <laughs> Seriously? You probably have watched something else. But, yeah. Uh, I think. <clears throat> That's fair. Well, I, I think I, I watched The Hunt. That was Please, really good. Yeah. <laughs> Fill uh, out my section. The, the Hunt was really, really funny. Uh, actually, a really different way of doing a film as well. It was very interesting way of doing it, but it works. It works really, really well. Um, I think it's a black comedy. If I'm laughing at it and it's not meant to be, that's that's awful. But I, I mean, it's hilarious. <laughs> it is really, really good film. I would recommend to people. Um, finally, getting through Lost. 
yeah. actually properly getting through it, not just like an episode a week. <laughs> I'm actually watching like half a series. <laughs> so it's getting there slowly. I am enjoying that very much. So. I did watch a documentary the other day, which is one I was w- waiting for for a while. It's uh, American Murder, uh, The Killers Next Door, or something. I can't remember what it's called. Mm. It's about like Chris Watson, uh, him, him killing his family to lead a different life. Jesus. It's very interesting. <laughs> and he, I do like uh, documentaries on that. He uh, like denied it to start with, but then he eventually just broke down and like confessed to it, like in being interrogated and stuff. Jesus. Um, Wait, was that the guy that killed his family and then went on TV and was like, "Hey, my family, yeah. please come home. I yeah. haven't just buried you. Come home." <laughs> it didn't take long for him to crack it. But, uh, That's got to be a, you, yeah. The human mind can't live with something like that, not unless you're a proper psychopath. I know, um, but yeah, it's just kind of. The, the, the extreme of the human mind, I suppose. So it's always interesting to like, kind of watch things about that. Mm. I do like um, documentaries and uh, things like that. I do find them fascinating. It's it's interesting to educate myself on. Especially, I, I think I find them more fascinating because I, I like learning about the psyche of it. Yeah. Wanting to become a mental health counsellor and then eventually work in criminal counselling. Hopefully, that's the goal. Um, I, I find it absolutely fascinating learning about what motivated these people to do it and then suddenly what broke them to they couldn't live with themselves anymore it's a we it's that line that you know as a human mind can't cross <laughs> like how much can you actually live with yeah probably quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> probably a fair bit but you know there's going to be some room for breaking down at some point yeah it's only so much torture <clears throat> but uh yeah another one i watched was enola holmes Oh, yeah. That was a bloody good film, actually. I know there's a lot of legal stuff going on about it um, in regards to how they portrayed Sherlock because he had emotion. He didn't. He he barely has any. Yes, he cares about his sister. That's it. (laughs) He doesn't exactly show emotion. He just shows... you know, eye candy. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God. Him in a (laughs) three-piece suit. (laughs) Henry Cavill, I think, could wear anything and I'd melt. It's fine. (laughs) I'm happy to admit this. He can be Sherlock, James Bond, The Witcher, whatever he wants to be. I think, um, who was the other person? Uh, Yeah, going on to that subject then of, like, James Bond and stuff. Um, Who do you think the next one's going to be? Because I know Henry Cavill's name's been thrown out there. Tom Hardy. Who's the other person? It was one of Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, he could play a young James Bond, I reckon. Yeah. But I think he's busy filming Uncharted right now. <laughs> what a failure that's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't see that going well. <laughs> yeah, I can see Henry Cavill doing it. Um, mm. I, I I prefer a, a less fresh-faced Bond, but, you know, whatever. Can't have it all, I mm. I don't really know who just suggested it. Um, yeah. yeah, I can see him doing it though. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's a very talented actor. I know a lot of people um, that I know that aren't that massive fans of him. They kind of feel like he's quite drag and he doesn't really show any emotion or anything like that. Yeah, and I don't know. He plays a lot of characters that naturally don't You're show not a lot of emotion. Face a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's uh, you're focusing on something else. <laughs> so am I. Um, but I mean, a lot, a lot of the characters that he plays, in all fairness, are quite, you know, not I wouldn't say emotionless, but they 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 show emotion in a very specific way. Like the villain in in Fallout, he was very sort of dry and evil, just fuck you, <laughs> essentially. And then he would do like a taunting thing. He showed emotion by taunting. Yeah. You know, uh, Tom Cruise's character. And then you have him in The Witcher when he's playing Geralt. Geralt is renowned for having emotion. That's what makes him different to every other Witcher. Yeah. He has emotions and he shows it. So I, I don't get why people get that or where mm-hmm. they get it from. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, I don't see that. Um, maybe I've just got, you know, starstruck eyes. Maybe that's mm-hmm. why. I don't know. Um, just got a total crush. <laughs> yeah, total man crush <laughs> on Henry Cavill. He can be another gaming husband. He's, he's <laughs> <gamer>. Yes. <laughs> Henry, contact me. <laughs> Joe Exotic wants to... <laughs> the, the, the cheaper version of Joe Exotic and the Welsh version wants to talk to you about playing The Witcher. <laughs> the Welsh is answer to Joe Exotic. <laughs> Will you answer to Joe Exotic? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
But yeah, yeah. Uh, on to a little bit of, uh, I guess we can go into a little bit of movie news. The Zack Snyder cut of uh, uh, Justice League. That's now been confirmed. That's coming out. They've done some reshoots for it. But Henry Cavill's not actually being called back. Oh. So what's our kind of thoughts on that? Are we looking forward to it? Do we so think obviously it's the, be um, the whole issue with his beard being like CGI removed, isn't it? Yeah, his moustache. <laughs> when he was filming Fallout. Uh, it's <laughs> it's like I, I think that that issue will still persist then because obviously he had like everyone's moaning about his CGI mm. top lip. <laughs> I did actually notice it when I watched it, but yeah, I I, I I only noticed it when I found out about it. Yeah, it's like I can't unsee it now. You know, it's just there. But, um, um, what's, so, our yeah. kind of, what's our kind I of thoughts on that? A good um, good to see his cut of it because the film didn't do that great when it mm. originally released the theatrical version. Um, so I'd be interested to see the, the Zack Snyder cut. I know it's going to be so long, though. Four, four and thing. a half. Oh, God. <laughs> four and a half hours, um, I think. Yes. So. so I have to dedicate a whole afternoon to that one. Yeah. I, I, I'll be... happily watch it, but that's, good. that's a long film. <laughs> but yeah. I think, to be honest, it makes sense for something like Justice League to be that long with the sheer number of big, iconic characters that are in it. So I, I personally, I think it makes sense. I mean, I watched the extended version of it. I got the Blu-ray of it. Uh, well, not of uh, Justice League, sorry. Um, I watched the extended cut of Batman v Superman. And that's damn near three lo- three hours long. Um, so and I think the extended version was better because it was able to tell more of a story. And I think that's the problem: is people are impatient. They like to have quick and simple yeah, and easy fix. stuff. You know, it's why people don't watch series anymore that often because they're like, oh, each episode's an hour. There's twelve episodes. That's twelve hours of my life. <laughs> So, but if you just watch an episode every other day or something, or every week, as as they release, very manageable. I I completely agree. But yeah, any more film news then? Not uh, not at this point. Shall we move on to some interesting stuff? Random things. <laughs> oh, random things. Random things. First random thing is urgent news. Donald Trump's doctor refuses to say if the president needs oxygen. Why won't they tell us? <laughs> it's literally they just come out. <laughs> it's literally just come out like half hour ago. Apparently oh, he's, wow. he's absolutely point blank saying that Donald Trump is doing fine. There's he no, doesn't need oxygen or whatever. Then... Well, we should know the exact same thing happened with Boris. In it, exactly. So, so yes. you don't want people to be scared that they're going to lose the leader. Bust. They'll cover it up until the very last second. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they can't cover it up because something leaks, that's when they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> because he's fucking dead. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, if that happened, I'm sure that would be quite hard to cover yeah. up. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> 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 like oh, a puppet. Could... That would be a fucking... Expert. That'd be terrifying. The idea <laughs> that he was, like, a day ago going, he's a useless man, I don't like him, he, he wears a mask, look at the mask. Imagine that news breaking that President Trump didn't make it through. Hopefully he does, you know, yeah, obviously, yeah, but yeah, never know. That's the first random thing. It was urgent news. <laughs> the second random thing is one that's been uh, probably we can relate to. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do we think about, in general, men not being able to show their emotions? <laughs> um, I mean, I suppose stereotypically women are more likely to talk to their friends about emotional things. Uh-huh. And in mm. general, I know suicide rates of men are kind of very high at the yeah. moment, especially They're during lockdown. Higher. And in younger men as well, it's like getting younger and younger. They're just, yeah. It's an uncontrollable figure. It's like more people are dying from that than COVID these days. Like yeah. Sadly. Tenfold. Sadly. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, I would say, like, historically, I suppose, like, if we go back 100 years, men were supposed to be the ones, the breadwinners in the family, the ones who were supposed to go out there and work, and the, the, the women used to stay at home and, you know, look after the kids, do with the more emotional matters. Mm. Um, and it's kind of like just business for the guys, and, you know, whenever they meet up with their friends with drinks, it's just, you know, chilling. <laughs> who wants to talk about personal shit when they just want to drink? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Obviously, in recent times, things have gotten better. Mm. A lot of guys are more willing to talk about their emotions and open up to other men. Mm. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, what are your thoughts on it? It's complete bollocks, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make you less of a man just to cry or talk about your emotions. And I will say this: that the the, the suicide rate of of people unfortunately has risen during COVID times. Um, not just men, women as well, probably, I imagine. I, I can't imagine it's only affecting one gender. Um, God knows there's about 12 genders now, so, you know, oh, fuck well. knows. But, I didn't think about that. But, Sorry. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's not like I'm trying to drop you in shit. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think about it either until we, I was about to talk, and I went, oh, actually. But, yeah, no, you are absolutely right. There is a, and an shamefully, I think, there is still a stigma around men opening up and, and being honest, and, uh, you know, I, I find it so baffling. Because I'll, I'll be honest, I used to think that for a very, very long time until I was like, probably, you know, my early 20s, well, I am in my early 20s still technically, but, you know, when I turned 21 or something, that was when I really started to understand, like, opening up is okay. You can talk about stuff just because I'm a bloke with a beard and some tattoos doesn't mean that I don't have feelings. You know, it's, and and it's it's fascinating because it's, it's one of those things that you just, I, I can't get my head around it. Why is this still a thing in our society that we, we, penalize a lot of the time men for being emotional or being open about how they feel it's it's that same thing it's like even as kids i i remember being a kid and if i if i cried the group of people i'd hang out with would be like oh, he's crying he's yeah, a he's a, a wimp it's and a it's, negative thing but if a girl cries in the same year oh, oh give yeah. her a hug yeah <laughs> i want a hug too you bastards <laughs> <laughs> like Come it's... here, Petal. Come here. <laughs> Come over here. Uh, yeah, it's. I, I do think it's an unfortunate stigma that has sadly yeah. st stuck f for many, many years. Uh, I do think it is slowly getting better. Oh, yeah. and, and it's one thing I do love about, like, uh, especially YouTube social media's influencers that, that get out there, yeah. is that a lot of them have talked about mental health and how it can affect you and how it affected them. And them coming out with their stories, I think, is definitely helping. Um, I think celebrities, when they talk about it, I think it's definitely a very positive thing, especially men. Um, mm. I think what was one of the most, uh, what was one of the biggest ones that I ever heard? Oh, I can't remember. It was like a big news article and, and obviously in tabloids and stuff, it was like everywhere. This person suffered with mental health issues. Did you know? It's like, well, yeah. no, of course he fucking didn't. <laughs> That's their issues. <laughs> like, I think that the thing is, I th I would say this, if randomly someone listens to it because i'm actually going to start making clips out of these as well like so when we talk about certain things it'll just be that clip i'll share puppy <laughs> but, <laughs> no it's fine puppy no one can be angry at a dog um <laughs> i think i don't know i i, I think if, if people are suffering with mental health regardless of your gender but if you are a bloke uh, or a man or a boy or whatever you want to bloody call it if you are a young man and you are struggling with your mental health, don't be ashamed to turn to one of your parents, to one of your friends, to yeah. f another member of family, to your partner, whatever, and just be like, hey, I'm going through something right now, can we talk about it? And that's it. Yeah, it's, it's, we're not denying that every gender oh, yeah, has, no, will have these uh, <clears throat> mental health issues or struggle to talk about yeah. things, but we're being men ourselves, I mean, yes. assume you agree. I, yeah. I, I identify uh, as a grapefruit, but uh, no, like that's we fine. We know where we're coming from with this one, and we can... Help other people. <laughs> the, oh. dog, the dogs come in. Dogs like I'm gonna make this conversation more happy. <laughs> the dogs are wet. <laughs> oh puppies. Uh, but yeah. But yeah. So I would definitely. What was your experience then with with mental health then and growing up and and stuff like that? Uh, well, it's, it's pretty similar to yours. Any kind of weakness or emotion that was shown was seen as a weakness. Mm. Uh, you do. You don't talk about stuff like this to your friends, do you? It's mm. like <laughs> it was just old jokes and games when you're talking to your friends. Mm. Uh, and then I would only feel comfortable talking to women <laughs> about any kind of. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, I ironically, and do you know what? I, I've always said this. I've always got along with women, or or more. Uh, like older, I know. Older, older. Older elite figures. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've I've got, always got along better with women than I have with men ever since I was younger. Um, and with uh, even like friends and stuff, females, I've always been had better friendships and stuff with them. Yeah. Hello, puppets. Uh, but um, yeah, I've always found it profoundly more easy. I I was very lucky um, as well in my early, like 
you know, in my 90, like 18, 19 years, I had a lot of male friends that were okay, like weren't assholes, basically. Uh, I'll yeah. put it like that. Um, oh, yeah, I was never friends with like any uh, typical bloke, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think I ditched all them after school. <laughs> so <laughs> they're like, yeah. I felt a bit bad because I did have a few good friends, but uh, a lot of them were very, um, should we say, stereotypical men. Yeah. We'll go with that. That's the respectful way of putting it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think it's a shame. Well, it it but... was so like untalked about that. I don't think I even realised that anything like this existed <laughs> for a yeah. good time. Absolutely, I no. I, I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think no. I w- I would agree with that. I think the thing is as well is is the education on it is not very good. Um, yeah. I think we've talked about education and stuff and kind of what, how we feel about having mental health be an actual thing that we're taught. Go for it. I'll keep talking. Um, I think yeah. it's 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 one of those things. I think that you know, if we had been taught about it when we were younger, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. I think that's yeah. the problem. It's not pushed enough into like now. I see it all the time. You know, young people are like, "I'm depressed." You're not. You've just lost a Jaffa cake. You're not. You're not depressed. Yeah. You're just sad. There is a difference. And, and and I think that's the that's the biggest issue now is that yes okay it's become more accepted but I think people are saying there's something when they're not so it's yeah. starting I think to get there should be like a, a science <clears throat> subject like biology chemistry it should be like a social science kind yeah of thing. Like, well it is technically it's issues, chemistry it? it's it's chemis- chemicals yeah. in your brain that are out of whack um, well, when was that a bloody subject was exactly <laughs> and I think they should have something like. Um, I don't know what you could call it, but, you know, like a, a type of uh, social lesson or something to learn about, you know, stigmas and why they're not OK and, uh, you know, breaking down mental health, the things you go through. Like, again, I think we've talked about this as well, sexual education. I had one lesson in my entire schooling, one lesson, and it was putting a fucking condom on a, on a banana. How is that going to help me? <laughs> this is what we do, children. Look and it goes down. Look at that. Woo! I hope we never have any of that. I, I got educated online then when I found websites <laughs> but and that's <laughs> that is not a good way to learn your sexual education at all so yeah i, th- I think it's a, an unfortunate stigma that for some reason is still around to this day and it needs to piss off <laughs> I, I think it's as simple as that it's a shame a lot of guys don't have any supportive friends and they just want to be this you know to look that they see on tv or whatever yeah um, no. The exterior isn't always everything. Mm. It's it's annoying, <laughs> but uh, I, I unfortunately I do think it's just a stigma that's going to stick forever. Yeah. Um, and Luckily, we both have people we can talk to. And we both have exactly supportive and, and friends. Male same, and female. same goes for people that are watching this. I I I know there are a few people who are watching this, and I I know I've I've actually had conversations with people that watch our podcast who are like, you know my mental health rough at the moment i've lost someone that i love or um you know uh, covid has has ruined my entire life and stuff and you know there is no shame whether you're a man or a woman going i i need someone to talk to right now or i'm fucked like there is no shame in admitting you the first step to getting better is saying i i have some mental health issues and i need to deal with them that's it and you go from there. If you think counselling is the route you need, you go for that. If you need to get medication and go on that temporarily to sort of get yourself to a, a healthier spot to be able to address the issues, then do that. You know, just help yourself. Don't make yourself suffer in silence when there are so many people that feel exactly the same way that you do. And there is yeah. no shame in that. Just just fucking don't listen. I know it's hard. It's much easier said than done being like, don't listen to the people that fucking, you know, Say horrible shit about it. Fuck them. Those kinds of those kinds of people are the people that like getting pleasure out of fucking other people's misery, and yeah. they're not. And weird. those types of people end up needing it in the future. <laughs> exactly. Funny that, isn't it? And it's ironic. They're not worth the shit in the toilet. So just yeah. if if you suffer with mental health, go and get yourself help, or ju- not even get yourself help. Just talk to someone. That's all it is. And as long as you can have an outlet. That is what is important. You know, no one should ever yeah. feel alone, especially in the times that we're in. I'll leave it at that. Otherwise, I could preach on about this shit for hours. <laughs> like, I'm so bad with it. <laughs> Obviously, there's tons of, like, hotlines and uh, helplines you can contact. Yeah, absolutely. I'll leave them down below as well. Like, the Samaritans, 
Um, obviously, they're like the, the yeah. main one. But it's 116123 if you ever want anyone to talk to. The Samaritans there. And yeah, they're waiting for your call. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and that's if you have no one else to talk to and you feel like you need. Uh, even if you do have people to talk to and you just want an anonymous yeah absolutely person. maybe you're not comfortable discussing the stuff that you want to talk about with people in your life there's i know the first first step for me of talking about things was to talk about someone who had no relation to me whatsoever and wasn't going to judge me mm. uh that is the kind of the first step that i needed to take out of curiosity then just to kind of um elaborate on this subject um because i know we've sort of dabbled in stuff that we've gone through but uh, obviously within the range of feeling comfortable. Um, is there kind of an incident that really resonates with you when it comes to mental health that you think, oh, I remember that part. I remember how troubling that was or whatever. You don't obviously have to. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, safe room. I'm not sure really. I just know that obviously they got to a point where I needed to get help. And yeah. I just ended up phoning the doctor. Like, usually I'm kind of a person who has to be pushed into these things. But mm. obviously it was like, <laughs> that was my only option or something bad. <laughs> it was like an uh, imaginary you behind you kicking you up the ass. Go get out! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. like, that was a turning point for me. It's like either that or something bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I do that. And it's the best, best thing, you know, on the road. Yeah. That's the first step, you know. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. M multiple things kind of kicked it off, but it's, it's all, like, you know, <laughs> great now. <laughs> yeah. It's better. <laughs> It's better. Everything gets better. That's the thing. Yeah. Everything gets more excited and better. But just so yeah. it's fair and not just one-sided. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You've, 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 you've said been waiting it. for this moment. <laughs> oh, I love the limelight. Oh, yeah. No, no, I don't. But I, I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand times again. Last year was the rough, roughest year of my life. That was the year that I knew I needed to get help. I won't say any more than that. Mainly because, Christ, I could do a two-hour fucking seminar on last year. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. But last year was, was my wake-up call. We'll say that much. Ah, I have a question for you, Sean. It's a light-hearted question. <laughs> What's your favourite thing you own and why? <laughs> so, oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, it's going to have to be the obvious one, really. Definitely it's PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that because PlayStation. Because it has, not just for the game, but it's allowed me to meet so many great people mm. throughout the years. The oh. social aspect of it. Yes, gaming is very social when it wants to be. <clears throat> and before I met all you guys, I met like loads of other people and like made friends with those. So yeah. Visited other places of the country that I would normally not visit and stuff. So mm. it's more than just a box that you play games on. It's, it is everything <laughs> these days. <laughs> It touches on all parts of life. What about you? Oh. Um... <laughs> you weren't expecting that question. <laughs> no, I, was, I was hoping we move on. No. Uh, of course. Most important thing to me that I own. I'm like looking around as if I'm going to find Materialistic it. bastard. Uh... My internet. <laughs> <laughs> my internet. Otherwise, I can't live my life. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, uh, pro probably, probably the photos I own. I would say, because I, I like, I'm very sort of a nostalgic person, so uh, having photos and stuff is, is um, a really important part to me, because then I get to, you know, remember remember moments from the past, and it kind of humbles me in a slight way as well, like, especially going back on the subject of, like, mental health, it reminds me of a time where I was, like, a lot worse compared to now, or something like that, you know? So, mm. uh, yeah, I would I would say photos, or pictures, yeah. or anything like that. They, they tend to be my most valued thing, anyway. Say. More so than my PlayStation, I know. What the fuck? You know, <laughs> it's interesting that you can look back on photos and be like, you know, I was worse then, but even though that day specifically, I was having a good time, like on paper. Like you can be in whatever state and still have good days and whatever. <laughs> yeah, you no, can be yeah. in uh, the absolute darkest state imaginable, but still go on a nice day out and smile for pictures. <laughs> oh hell yeah! <laughs> ah. But you just not allow you don't you don't allow yourself to see the light. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just lock myself in my room and draw my curtain. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> next. <laughs> next. Let's get the show on the road. So what's the next one? <laughs> what's the luckiest thing that's ever happened to you? Uh, 
Do you want to answer first? <laughs> Walking? <laughs> that, genuinely, I wasn't meant to walk. Yeah. Uh, so it was uh, an interesting perspective when I stood up when I was like five and my mum was like, the fuck? <laughs> Who are you, Bigfoot? Sit down. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was probably the luckiest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. The surgeon that I got who actually made me walk. Honestly. Um, I don't know, just I suppose having the ability to communicate with people and make friends and, you know, live a normal life, that's lucky for me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> people are blessed with that. So Some I'm just lucky to be alive, you know. Yeah. So that's a nice one. I like that. Have you got a most embarrassing moment? <laughs> I have too many. <laughs> I'll be honest. I can't. Th I can think of an embarrassing moment that happened literally two days ago, but I can't uh, think of uh, a really bad one. But I'll just say this one anyway. No, it doesn't it, have to be really bad. That, Jesus. That embarrassing moment when you uh, you walk around with someone else's trolley in the. Uh, this isn't like that bad, you know. Mm. You walk around with someone else's trolley without realizing it in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes, I was pushing this woman's trolley around. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? I, those those are the situations though, that can turn into some of the best memories. Like, I think she's actually like grateful that I was doing it. She was like, "Oh, you've pushed it for me, thanks, dearie." <laughs> I was to, like, little Wi-Fi or something like to get this bonus card, but mm. I was like, "Oh, yeah, you won't worry, just pushing this trolley." Um, oh, that's amazing. But, yeah. And then she was like, excuse me, that's like, oh, no, I'm dying inside. Oh, fuck, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. th those moments can be quite entertaining, though, as well. <laughs> Where's my trolley? Yeah. <laughs> happen to me. Look at that. <laughs> Just... Then I like, had to go back to the start to find my own trolley. <laughs> yeah, to actually... Wait, she didn't yeah, bring just... your trolley? She was just like, fuck you. Trolley, Take those. my okay. fucking trolley. <laughs> but God. yeah, anyway, that, that's not bad at all. That's just one I could think of recently. That That is quite skin crawling, though, especially if it's like you didn't realise. A bit cringy. <laughs> a bit. It's, it's like quite funny, cringy. though. I oh, suppose. For other people. <laughs> uh, my, my, what's my most embarrassment? I, I don't know. If I had to choose one, it was probably... Walking into, <laughs> walking into the wrong like classroom or something, genuinely mm -hmm. like we're uh, back in school or something like you walk into a classroom and you you're so confident that it's the classroom you're in you'd open the door waltz in and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sitting oh. there for half an hour and then the feeling of dread when your name is on the register. Yeah, and you're like, oh <laughs> shit. That <laughs> happens to me every time. Yeah, it'd be especially bad if it's like the start of the year when you don't know anyone. Yeah, in, like... it was like every time, start of every time. Every year. <laughs> it's fucking same shit every year. It's like, James, you're not in this class. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Get out. Oh, nice. What's your favourite holiday, Sean, and why? Uh, uh, I don't know, really. I suppose it wouldn't really be classed as a holiday, but it was with, like, a university trip to Berlin. That was a good one. I managed to, like, kind of, be independent. It's like my kind of my first time away, um, like just on, on my own, kind of with cosmates. Mm. Um, but that was cool, <laughs> um, being able to just be independent and explore a different city. Uh, we went up the Berlin radio station and stuff. I had like a drink up there, and it's very memorable. And yeah, I enjoyed that one the most. Just feeling free. <laughs> yeah, no, feel feel free and alive. Yes. Yeah. Staying in a hostel, got no sleep whatsoever, but, you know, that, those are the worth it times. Uh, a German hostel, yes. <laughs> wow. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's awesome. Uh, luckily, I had, a, like, a, it was like an option of, like, a room with 13 strangers, or, like, there's this one separate room with four of us in it. I was like, oh, yes, take that. <laughs> uh, I can't deal with the people's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Christ! I I, I I don't know. I have nights where I snore like really badly, and then I have nights where I'm literally silent. I don't get it. Mm. It's like my sinuses choose when they want to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try and kill him tonight. But if it doesn't work, then we'll just snore really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jesus. Yeah, that's bad. What about your favourite holiday? A holiday. Um, probably to Spain. 
Uh, it was like a big family holiday. I think I was like 14. It was the first time I'd ever gone abroad. And um, we went to like this really, really lovely villa and there was like a pool and all of us were there, like my grandparents, my auntie, my uncle, Steve, who was like a father figure to me, my mum. Like uh, we were all there and it was this nice villa. It was like a week away. My granddad did like shred the skin off his arm by slipping on some steps at one point. Oh, but, um, yeah. It was quite, actually, it was quite funny because he just pissed off and just left <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and found like a, a shop and was like, mate, do you mind <laughs> pissing blood all over this floor? Oh, and he's wow. like, do you mind helping me? And the guy was like, oh, <laughs> so, yeah, that was quite oh, amusing. Uh, El bandito portable. Oh, and another, another funny moment from that holiday. My granddad never, never swore, right? He was very, very, you know, uh, against it. He, he, or not against it, but... He never swore. He was not in his vocabulary. He's a proper gentleman. Yes, he was a proper man. Uh, or proper gentleman. Um, but uh, he... Uh, when they had to like put the disinfectant stuff on every night to make sure it didn't get infected or whatever, being out in Spain and, and whatnot, uh, there was this one time, and it was the first time they were putting the stuff on, and uh, my auntie basically just turned to him and went, this might sting a bit. He'd be like, oh, I'll be fine. And all we heard, out of the, it was silent for about five seconds, you heard the spray bottle go, and all you heard was, fuck me! <laughs> 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 oh, no one. We were like, Jesus, he actually swore? <laughs> uh, this is the man I look up to. <laughs> yeah, like, what the hell? But it was, uh, it was very funny. Very is funny. that where you learned how to swear <laughs> oh no i i learned to swear by watching too many films rated 18. <laughs> that's where i got my vocabulary from <laughs> not so much the porn but the uh <laughs> the, the the swearing on the tv box <laughs> fair enough and i'll make this the last question and we'll end it there but uh yes the final one if you could travel through time anywhere in time where would you go uh, to the 80s to experience a true 80s disco. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's fair. See a sea of colour. Oh, that's cool. Fair dues. Yeah, light hearted. Yeah. Oh, I'd probably. I'd, I'd, we'll I'd... go back to like 1939 and kill Hitler. <laughs> I get credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. I'd probably say same. Probably <coughs> 70s or 80s. As a teenager, I'd want to go back specifically as like just turned 18. Yeah, I'd just want to go and that see, night. like Nightmare on Elm Street for the first time in the oh, cinema. That'd be so cool. <laughs> oh damn, so many cool things. <laughs> well, it be good coolest time. <laughs> it would be. I do love the fashion from back then as well. Weirdly enough, even yeah, though I, I don't really wear that kind of fashion, admittedly, but. <laughs> Um, um, I don't know if that's like 90s stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to, to have that style, but I'm just, I can't pull it off. <laughs> the face just doesn't do it. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I think we'll call it there. I think it's been a, very, a rather long one. It has. Uh, see, every time we think it's going to be short, fucking ends up being super long. Yeah, nearly two hours. Nearly two hours, Sean. It's the longest one we've done in fucking ages. That's what she said. <laughs> hey! <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who watched this one or listened or had it on the background or who just watched the random clips that I'm going to upload through the week because what I'm going to do is upload clips through the week and then this will go up next weekend. Yes, I apologise if I'm really dark. It's the gloomiest day in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it is gloomy as fuck. But uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, thank you very much to everyone for watching. If you did, again, thank you for Sean for joining me, as always. My it's pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and see your face. So yes. uh, yeah, and to anyone that watched this on demand, thank you very, very much. I always leave these podcasts beaming with joy. Yes, but... I'm always happy. I mean, yeah. I'll be miserable in about three hours when I've sat here yeah. doing nothing but editing this shit. <laughs> but I'll be fine. It'll be good. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, though. Uh, hopefully you're still enjoying the, the podcast, even if there are two weeks in between. But I think it does work out better. Hopefully podcasts will be longer like this one because we'll have more to talk about. So it'll work better in the long run. So, yes, I'll leave it there because I'll ramble on otherwise. But thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. And myself and Sean will see you very, very soon. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
you needed clarity So I could see how you 